come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, like, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Bigfoot, or is that Eric Wilson? Oh, my goodness, what a reveal. He's here. Yeah. You know him as the diehard Rangers fan who hates Ryan Strom for a living. Let's go ahead and dive into some New York Rangers content today. We're going to be discussing an interesting topic of whether or not the Rangers should trade for a third-line defenseman. Now, depth has sometimes been an issue for the Rangers this season, as last season as well. We remember during the Eastern Conference Finals, we were discussing it right here on this channel, Eric. We were saying that depth clearly became an issue down that stretch as some of these players got a little bit gassed. Stamina wasn't quite there in the third period. So the Rangers, they did go out there, add some depth to the roster this season, but it still is somewhat of an issue. So we want to discuss as the trade deadline continues to loom a large here, whether or not the Rangers should make a move for a third line defenseman. But before we dive into that topic, Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. I was doing a lot better until you mentioned he who shall not be named. It wasn't didn't really see that one coming out of nowhere. You know, we're doing good. Let's just get into it. Yeah, my bad. I kind of probably put some blood in your ears, made your ears start bleeding with that name that I'm forbidden from speaking. But I did it anyway. I like to break the rules. I'm a rule breaker. And so let's go ahead, though, and dive into these players, because I think that this is an interesting topic when you look at how the Rangers have been playing in recent weeks. I mean, they had their little slow period. They went on a little bit of a losing streak. But now they're the hottest team in hockey. Seven wins in a row. They look tremendous. They're on fire. Gerard Glant has completely turned this team around after a slow uh, midway point in the season and they're hot they're playing well Panarin's been playing well he had a multi-point performance recently and a big blowout seven to one victory over Chicago what more can you say the Rangers are hot at the right time right now this Christmas uh, time period is probably the most crucial point of the NHL season and the Rangers are taking off and playing really really good hockey right now so let's go ahead and discuss why we think a third line defenseman could be that missing piece for the Rangers. So, Eric, what are your thoughts on that? The fact that, you know, you look at this team and it looks a lot more complete now, now, now that we're winning than it did a few weeks ago. I think the line changes that Gerard Glant made uh, really highlight that this roster is more complete than we initially believed. But what makes you think that maybe that third line defenseman could be the missing piece? I mean, overall, I think the team is pretty solid, like you said. And we we're kind of like nitpicking at this point where it's like we have a really good team. What's like the one thing we can do to improve it? And I really just think it is another defenseman. Because you look at our top four D, they're pretty solid. Besides Truba, who every once in a while just gets on my nerves and pisses me off really bad. We got like Fox and Lingren are solid. Miller and Truba for the most part are pretty solid. And Braden Schneider has also been one of the best defensemen in the NHL over the last couple of weeks. And then you just have that left defenseman on the third pairing right there that we just keep changing in and out. You know, at the start of the season, it was Zach Jones. That didn't really work out. We had Libor Hayek playing there for a little bit, and that didn't really work out. And now the last couple of games, we've been working with Ben Harper down there on the third pairing. And he's, he's looked pretty solid over the last couple of games that he's played. I don't really know too much about him. I was a little confused when I saw him in the lineup his first game. I was like, where did this guy come from? But he's looked all right. It's just My concern is, is it a long-term answer, or are we just going to keep shuffling people in and out? I think the one thing that could really improve this team and solidify the lineup would just be figuring out who's going to be that third guy on the left side defense that's just going to carry us through the playoffs in that position. Well, let's go ahead and discuss some of those possible names then. Let's figure out who that potentially could be on the left side of the third line defense. And the first name, Eric, that you want to bring to the table is Jacob Chikrin. And I was messing with you beforehand. Jacob Chicharron? No, it's Jacob Chikrin. But he's played in 14 games this season with three goals and 10 assists, 13 points, and a plus nine differential. So a pretty solid season out of him thus far. But what are your thoughts on Jacob Chikrin, and why do you think that he could potentially be a fit with the New York Rangers? I mean, Jacob Chikrin is a phenomenal NHL defenseman. And if we were to acquire him at the trade deadline or before the trade deadline or whatever, he probably wouldn't end up being on the third line. He might move up to the second and then maybe like Truba would shift to the left side and be down to the third. But it's interesting because looking at like the Rangers and who they've been putting on the trade block and looking at coming closer to the deadline, we really haven't explored too many defensemen. So a lot of these names are bigger names that have just been like popular on other teams, trade blocks and like who they're willing to give up. So it's kind of just like a shot in the dark when we discuss these names. But I do know that the Coyotes are very interested in moving Jacob Chikrin, and he's a great offensive defenseman. 
you know, he's almost a point per game so far this season. And the fact that he's a plus nine as well really shows something because the Coyotes are one of the worst teams in the entire league. I think in like the 30 something games they've played, they've only been favorites to win in one single game. That was like two days ago against Montreal. So I think he'd be a perfect fit. Um, he'd probably be end up playing with, um, sorry, <laughs> probably end up playing with Keandre Miller, who even though he does have a lot of offensive star power, he's more of a defensive minded defenseman. So Truba would probably be moved down to the third and playing with Schneider. And I think that'd be a perfect lineup because then in the first defensive pairing, the second defensive pairing and the third defensive pairing, you have one guy who likes to take it up the ice and is more offensive minded. And then another guy who stays back and is more defensive minded. And it's that balance right there that I think would work out. The one thing that's a little scary with Jacob Chikorin is that he is tenured for another like two or three seasons, I believe, until the 24, 25 season at 4.6 million. So we would have to clear some cap space up, but it's not a crazy number to like numbers we've been saying with Patrick Kane. So I think it's possible. Definitely have to get them to retain some salary. We'd have to give up some guys, but he's a great defenseman. And I think it is a possibility that the Rangers could look into that within the next couple months. Yeah, but I, I think that that is something that we have to hit on here is that salary cap hit, right? The four point six million till two thousand twenty four to twenty five season. Now that's kind of a hurdle for the Rangers to have to jump here when you look at their salary cap space. Right now, the Rangers have one point six million in projected cap space for the season, so not a lot of room to work there. And some names that we would have to throw into the mix in this trade just to clear the cap space. Uh, of course, I, I believe you know the Rangers would be able to get some of that salary eaten by the other squad and you know not pay the full amount. But if you want to pay close to the full amount. You're talking about potentially shipping away Barkley Goudreau, uh, maybe Sammy Blay. Some of these guys here on the on the Rangers roster it would have to be probably sacrificed uh, in order to bring in a player like like Chikrin or any of the players that we're about to discuss. So I guess, Eric, what are you willing to give up? Is Barkley Goudreau someone that you're willing to throw into the mix in some of these trade negotiations? Or do you think that that could screw up the chemistry of the lines and maybe have more of an adverse effect than the uh, impact of Jacob Chikrin or any of these guys would be? Or are you willing to really make some sacrifices to get a talent like Chikrin on that third defensive line? I mean, yeah, you definitely have to give up a lot. And depending on who the players were, it would potentially be worth it. I don't think it would be right now. Obviously, we're on a seven game win streak looking to make it eight tonight against Pittsburgh. So I wouldn't really change anything up right now because, yes, it would mess up the chemistry. But, you know, this win streak, this little hot span of play that we've been on, it's not going to last forever. You know, eventually we're going to cool down and start taking some losses. And at that point, we're going to need to make a change. You know, we talk about our power play as well. Our first power play um, lines are pretty good. You know, they've scored pretty much every power play point we have. And on the second power play line, I think they've only scored like one goal this season. So normally Adam Fox is like the quarterback of the power play on defense. there, moving it up to the forwards. And we really don't have an offensive minded guy on the second power play to help out with that. And that's where Jacob Chakron would fit in. So it's like if I need to get rid of like an, just an average offensive guy like Sammy Blay, like Barclay Goudreau, I think it could potentially be worth it just to fill up these other gaps that we have in the lineup as long as we just have a decent couple of players to just step in and fill those roles that we're going to be missing when we give them up. For sure. And let's go ahead and move on to the second name that we want to throw into the ring here uh, and discuss John Klingberg. 25 games played this season, four, goal, four goals, seven assists, 11 points, but minus 15 and one year, seven million. So, Eric, what are your thoughts on Klingberg and why do you think that he could potentially be a fit? I think that the number that jumps out to me is the minus 15 differential um, mm -hmm. and the one year seven million dollar cap hit, because that's quite a lot of money. We're discussing, you know, how Jacob Chick ran at four and a half could be kind of steep for the Rangers since they're pretty tight on cap space, less than two million to spend. Uh, in total right now, they'll have to move on from some players. And when you're talking about Klingberg at 7 million with that kind of uh, differential, I think that is kind of an uphill battle, one that maybe the Rangers can't climb here. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing some research for this episode and I was looking up um, trade deadline, like rankings, who's most likely to be moved, who's not. And out of every single player in the NHL, including defensemen, forwards and goaltenders, John Klingberg was at number eight. And I think that's really interesting because Klingberg is an older guy. Uh, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he's got to be approaching his 30s by now. And he was like a superstar back in the day when he was a little bit younger. But recently, 
he's he's kind of just had a little decline in his career, like really plummeted really quickly. Obviously, the minus 15 is a pretty large number right there to have, especially on a team like Dallas, who has been pretty good. Actually, you know, Klinberg is on the Ducks now. It actually makes more sense because the Ducks are like the worst team in the league. But still, it's a pretty bad number no matter what. Even if you're on a bad team, you still got to put up good numbers if you're a guy with that kind of caliber that John Klingberg has put up throughout you know, his entire career. I kind of just like the fact that he is more just overall defensively minded. So if we were to just have him like get put right onto the third line right there, not move anyone around like we would with Jacob Chikorin, I think he would fit in kind of nicely next to Braden Schneider, who's more offensive minded. John Klingberg could stay back and help defend Igor just in case things go wrong. But as you mentioned, the biggest thing right there is the $7 million. Now, I doubt we'd get a be able to get Anaheim to retain any of that salary because that contract does expire after the season. You kind of he signed with Anaheim, kind of expecting to be moved at the deadline. But you know, seven's a big number. We would have to eat that just for a season. And I don't really know if it's worth giving up certain players like it would be for a guy like Chickering. So I'm not really sure. I like the idea of what he can contribute to the team. It's just what we'd have to give up for it and only for one playoff run. I don't think it would be worth it. Yeah, me personally, I think that that price is too steep for this player because when you look at what Chikrin is worth with that 4.6 and the production that he's had now, uh, Klingberg has played in more games this year, 25 games to 14 compared for Chikrin, but Chikrin has put up more points with 13 uh, total points and a plus nine differential compared to 11 points and a minus 15 from Klingberg. So I think the production that you'll get out of a guy like Chikrin on his contract, it's far better value than it is for a player like Klingberg. However, they're probably going to require more to trade for Chikrin than they are for Klingberg. So the Rangers would probably have to give up more in terms of draft assets or pieces on the roster. So I guess that's kind of where the debate really starts to heat up is what you're willing to give up for either of these players. But for me personally, I don't think I'm willing to give up nearly as much for Klingberg as I would be for Chikrin. But there's a third name here that we're going to go ahead and discuss. Uh, Eric, what's the man's name and what are your thoughts on him? All right, so Shane Goss is bare right uh, on the coyotes i think he's the greatest offensive defenseman that we're going to be talking about today you know this season he's played in 30 games eight goals 15 assists for 23 points he is a minus six but again that's what happens when you play on the coyotes you just you're going to get minuses no matter how good you are i don't care if you're Connor mcdavid you're not going to have a positive plus minus score right there but I, like I said, I think he is the best offensive-minded guy right there. He's kind of just like Chikorin, who could also be a quarterback on the power play as well. That's pretty much the role that he plays right there. And just like Chikorin, I think he wouldn't end up being on the third line. That's when we'd put Truba or Miller or someone else down on the third defensive pairing and keep them up on the second because you're really not going to break up Lindgren and Fox at this point of the season and their careers that they've been playing together the whole time. The biggest thing I like about him is that he's pretty similar to Chikorin. But he's a little bit cheaper. His contract is only 4.5 million instead of 4.6. It's only 100K, not the biggest thing. But again, that deal also expires at the end of the season. So the things that it would take to get the Coyotes to trade him rather than Chikorin would probably be a lot less. We could probably get the Coyotes to retain a little bit of salary right there. And, you know, we could probably just get him for a couple picks. And that's something that I would be willing to give up. So what he's able to contribute, how much it would take to get him. I think it evens out pretty nicely. I would say that's a pretty fair argument. It evens out. But again, another one year, four and a half million salary. It's still, what are you willing to give up? That's really going to be the question throughout this. And I think some Rangers fans who might be tuning in might comment down below in the YouTube section and say, they're probably not willing to give up quite quite a lot for any of these players because, again, the Rangers are winning games. Sometimes it's just better to say, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. Uh, and especially when you're talking about a player worth $4.5 million on the cap for one year, that might be a real tough pitch for some Rangers fans. But let us know your thoughts in the comments section. We got one more player that we want to discuss. Now, I get frightened every time I read some of these names, so forgive me if I mispronounce this one. But Vladislav... Gavrikov, right? I got it, Eric. I'm gonna assume that's how it is. This is like a yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Now you throw some nice Italian names in there. I got you. But 
we go a little more Eastern European. That's where I start to struggle. But Vladislav Gavrikov, uh, 31 games played this season, two goals, seven assists, nine points, minus one differential. Now, that's not a whole lot of production. When you're comparing that stat line to the guy like Jacob Chikrin, who's got 13 points in 14 games played, and then you look at nine points in 31 games played. So, Eric, give some insight there. Why is it such a difference? I mean, you you brought up these names. We're, we're discussing them. Chikrin's production is like, far and away better than every other player that you mentioned, minus maybe Shane Gostabear there with 30 games played and 23 points. That's pretty solid, but the differential is not nearly the same as Chikrin's. So now we're talking about Gavrikov, who's got the minus one, one year, 2.8 million though, much cheaper uh, salary cap hit. This is the most affordable player by far out of the names that we're going to be discussing here. But kind of what what is your idea here when you're looking at the the points production in terms of games played? And why do you think Jake, Jacob Chikrin has been so productive on his team compared to a guy like uh, Gabrikov? And do you really put that much value into that points production? Yeah, I mean, point production is obviously a nice plus when you look at players. But, you know, when you're on defense, your your main job is really to just play defense. P- scoring points is kind of just like a bonus added on to it if you're really good at it. Now, obviously, Gavrikov is more of a defensive-minded defenseman. He doesn't take the puck up that much. But what I really like in him, not only just the contract, you know, paying him 2.8 just for the rest of the season, um, it's just the way that he plays and the attitude he has towards it, it's it's more of a positive, you know. Um, he plays on the Columbus Blue Jackets, and with Zach Wierenski out for the remainder of the season, Gavrikov has kind of just, like, stepped in and filled that role and kind of just surprised pretty much everyone in the entire league with the way that he's been playing. Um, I think on the Blue Jackets, he has the biggest or largest time on ice average per game at like 22 minutes or per, per night, which is over an entire period played. So at 27 years old, you know, you're kind of coming into your prime right there, playing the most time on ice out of everyone on the team and coming very close to having a positive plus minus on a team like Columbus, who is full of minuses. You know, it shows potential. You know, if he's doing playing solid and making contributions on a team like Columbus, just imagine what he could do if he came to the Rangers playing with a guy like Braden Schneider, who's probably better than whoever he's playing next to in Columbus right now. So I also think he is the more realistic one right there. You know, Jacob Chikorin, John Klingberg, Gossip Spare, they are on the trade block on their respective teams. They're most likely going to be moved. But to the Rangers, we don't know. The Rangers haven't expressed that much interest in defensemen just yet as the trade deadline still like two or three months away. So I think if they are going to make a move, it's going to need to be someone cheap, someone who will fit nicely next to Schneider, won't have to switch up the lines and the defensive pairings around like we would if we got any of the other three. So I do think that Gavrikov, most realistic and most affordable and has the biggest positive outcome if we were to get him. Yeah, I like the idea of Gavrikov a lot. I think that $2.8 million cap hit is by far the most uh, appealing uh, aspect of this when you compare that to every other player that we've mentioned but every other player you're spending at least four and a half million but with Gavrikov 2.8 that's much more of a bargain especially as you mentioned defensive minded uh, defenseman who has played well on a bad team and I think that that's definitely something to take note of because if he's playing well on a bad team I think that he can play really well on a good team like the New York Rangers so I like that idea but ultimately Eric before we wrap this one up Do you think that this is a move that the Rangers should make? Like at the bottom line, should the Rangers even be trying to go out there and get a third line defenseman? Or are you happy to just keep what we have? If it isn't broke, don't fix it and just move on uh, with the roster at hand. I definitely think it is something that the Rangers should look into, but I don't think they should do it with too much urgency right now. Like I said earlier, we're winning games. Nothing really needs to be changed right now, but eventually that is going to come to an end. The cracks in our lineup are going to really show themselves. You know, we've, recently discussed um trading for a top six forward that's still in the air too and i think that is a little bit more urgent than picking up this final defenseman that just lock up that defensive core so it's really just going to depend on how everyone else is performing at that time if the offense starts to collapse and we're not producing points as the trade deadline comes closer go after that but if the defense starts to collapse and we're just losing like games like six to five we're still scoring but we're not defending enough then that's when this would come into play so Take it with a grain of salt, too, not too much urgency right here. These names that we discussed, they might not even still be on the, the, the trade block by the time the deadline comes around. They might get traded earlier. They might not get traded at all. So names are going to keep coming in and out. That's the best part about the NHL trade deadline. You never know what's going to happen. But just keep in mind that this is a possibility that should definitely be looked into. 
Yeah, and I'm really excited for the trade deadline because we get to talk about a lot of really exciting stuff here on Fireside Rangers. So if you love hearing discussions about the trade deadline, make sure to hit that subscribe button right away and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Before we do the full outro, though, Eric, and we really wrap this up, I do have one pressing question that I need to ask you, and that is, are there any Italian defensemen on the trade block that we can maybe go out there and get? Uh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably not. No, I remember this summer when we were, I think the Rangers, did they draft someone? His name was Vittorio something. He had the dopest yeah. Italian name. Do you remember mm. what his last name was? I don't remember what it was, but I remember that it was extremely Italian. Yeah, him. That's who I want. Make him the third line defenseman. Let's <laughs> let's call him up. That's my guy right there. Okay. I You see me. I'm repping today. I'm repping it. The Italia badge from the... Uh, men's team and soccer you know um, football i just i looked it up the um there's not that many italian defensemen in the league right now there's mike amodeo oh no he stopped playing in the 80s ah yeah that's uh, <laughs> that's quite a while ago yeah i definitely just butchered his name too robert uh bortuzzo is in the league i don't really know much about him i think he's on the blues bobby yeah. b yeah, it looks like you're a little out of luck right here. Damn, but hey, if, um, we, uh, if we need a new center to play on the fourth line, we can always look into Noel Achari. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do a whole episode dedicated to Noel Achari just for my own personal satisfaction and enjoyment as I flaunt my Italian pride nice and loudly on Fireside oh, Rangers. Nino is Italian. He's pretty good. There we go. Yeah, he's he's spitting out the names. Yeah. We'll, we'll find some comment content based around the, the Italiano. You and you know, know, won like two or three cups. You know, he'd be a little nice veteran presence on the team. We can get we can get rocking with that. Yeah. All right. Well, then, ciao, all of the Rangers fans listening. We'll <laughs> see you in the next one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Comment down below who your favorite Italian spokesperson of all time is. And if it's Anthony Robardo, I would love to hear that. Write that down in the comment section. Let me know if you're a big fan of my Italian presence on this podcast. Don't know why I got into such a weird Italian tangent today, Eric, but had a fun time. Everybody, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to Fireside Rangers and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. And Ciao. Now, let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. Woo! He shoots. He's got it. He's got it.